Warfarin is an anticoagulant medicine. It's also called a blood thinner. And it's used to treat anybody who is at risk of having a clot that can affect their heart, their brain, or be in their legs. The big worry in the leg is that it would loosen and be become a pulmonary embolus. Currently, it's very difficult to dose warfarin because when somebody comes into your office, they could require anything from one milligram a day to 20 milligrams a day. And you can't tell by looking at them. Little old ladies might require a high dose. Big football players may require a low dose. If someone is given five milligrams um, per day for their do initial dose of warfarin, it can take up to a month to couple months for that person, person to figure out the right dosing because for 46% of the people, they're either underdosed or overdosed, which means if you go back, underdosing means that we haven't solved the problem that you have in the first place and that you have a clot, which means potentially you could die from that clot, or alternatively, we've given you too much warfarin, which means you'll bleed to death. So in this study, we showed that if you take a few clinical variables like age and weight and height and combine it with genetics, in particular two genes, that you can predict the dose not anything from 1 to 20 milligrams, but in many cases within 1 milligram of what that patient will eventually require. Genotyping is now at the range of where it can happen in days or even hours. Um, and so from that standpoint, it may be the kind of thing where if you have a critically ill patient, you might say, okay, let's take their blood, we're gonna do the genotype, we're gonna give them an initial dose of five milligrams because one dose of five milligrams is not likely to cause them death. And in the meantime, in the next day or two, we are gonna find out what their real genotype is so that we can give them the appropriate dose. In the United States alone, there are 32 million patients on warfarin and about two million new starts of warfarin each year. Those two million are the ones that we hope to impact by having a much more effective way of starting the warfarin. We are not the first equation to be published. In fact, there were groups all over the world that had published equations. There was a Liverpool group, a Wisconsin group, a St. Louis group. The problem was their numbers were small, and when you tried the Liverpool equation on the Wisconsin patients, it didn't work. And when you tried the St. Louis patients on the w Liverpool equation, it didn't work. And so there was a frustration in the field of these small numbers were killing us. In concert with Dr. Michael Caldwell and Dr. Julie Johnson from the PGRN and Russ Altman and myself at Farm GKB, we managed to get groups together to work together to assemble their data to work towards this problem. And from an initial six groups in the U.S., it grew to 21 groups worldwide. This is truly the first global um, study on a fairly large population. And that's why this is so critically important. It's one dosing algorithm that will work worldwide. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.